All right, boys and girls. So this week in reading, we're going to be talking a lot about first-hand accounts and second-hand accounts. You can see those words in bold right here on my screen. So readers often come across nonfiction or informational text, and it can either be written as a first-hand account where someone is actually there experiencing the event, or it can be written as a second-hand account. And you can compare the information or the facts that each writer chooses to include in the text and emphasize. So let's look at this cartoon here. I see a young man looking at some of these houses. It looks like maybe damage has been done to the house. And then I see a young girl down here reading a book. So I'm going to read aloud this paragraph. I just want you following along. In 1900, a powerful hurricane wrecked the city of Galveston, Texas. It destroyed many homes. This boy watched the hurricane as it was happening. His description of the event would be a first-hand account that includes his thoughts and feelings. He wants to retell what he experienced. Take a look at the illustration again. Look at this beach bubble. I am going to write down everything I have seen so that I can remember it. So again, boys and girls, this is going to be a first-hand account because he was actually here to experience the hurricane. Now, let's look down here at the bottom of the screen. Again, we see this young girl, she's reading a book. Right here it says, I learned about the Galveston hurricane by reading a new book about it. So right now you're probably thinking to yourselves, well, this was a first-hand account up here, then maybe this is an example of a second-hand account, meaning she did not experience this hurricane. She has learned this information from another source. The girl was not in Galveston in 1900. She knows about the hurricane from reading a book written about it many years later. The book would be a second-hand account with a broader focus. It would include background information and other details from research. Now, you might be thinking, what do they mean by this term right here, broader focus? Broad just means a much wider focus. It's not going to include all of the details. For example, she might not read about how people felt in the town of Galveston, what they experienced, exactly what happened to their home, how they remember feeling when they heard the news about a hurricane coming through their city. She is going to learn more about maybe just the general, again, broader information about perhaps the impact of this hurricane and the damage that it caused. So now we're going to shift over to a different page and we're going to take a look at a text about a familiar topic, the Titanic. So right now, as I am shifting over to the next page, I want you to think, activate your background knowledge. What do you already know about the Titanic? So take a moment and think to yourself. All right, boys and girls, so you've had a moment to kind of activate your background knowledge and think about this topic of the Titanic. I know that many of you have probably heard of this ship before. Uh, this is a very, very large boat that left England, and it was heading to New York City when it suddenly struck an iceberg out in the ocean. Um, the ship took on water and it eventually sank. So there's been a movie, um, there's been several articles produced about this journey and about the Titanic, but that's really not our focus today. We're, we are going to learn more about the Titanic. Our focus is going to be again about firsthand and secondhand accounts. So before we get started reading today, I want you just to think about this question. Who would write a first-hand account about the sinking of the Titanic. So think to yourself, who would be the one that would be writing a first-hand account about the sinking of this ship? Right, the people, it would help if I spelled this correctly, who were passengers on the Titanic. 
they were there to experience this event. Now I want you thinking for a moment, really turn your brain on. If we know that the passengers would be writing a first-hand account because they were there, then what about a second-hand account? What are some examples of people who might write a second-hand account about the Titanic? Right, so these are people who have most likely researched the singing of the Titanic. These are also people who could have perhaps interviewed one of the passengers. Maybe they watched like a documentary or read like a magazine article or a news article. So as we're reading today, we want to think about, is this magazine article, The Unsinkable Titanic, an example of a first-hand account, or is this an example of a second-hand account? Again, we want to ask ourselves, was this person, the author, there to experience the event, or did they learn about this maybe through research or through someone else? There's a couple words that I wanted to point out, vocabulary words, before you start reading. The first word here is voyage. A synonym for the word voyage is a journey. The next word is haul. A haul is referring to the boat. Uh, let me see if I can show you a picture. Right along here, this part. So the haul is actually what struck the iceberg and caused the boat to sink. So it's a part of the ship. Another word is vessel, as the vessel took on water. So using those context clues, I know that the ship is what took on water, causing it to, right here, exactly, sink. So a synonym for vessel must mean a large ship. So again, this is a text, an informational text about the Titanic. Today you're going to read, and you are going to make a decision about whether this is a first-hand or second-hand account. Once you've finished reading through the text, the text is located right here on Schoology. You even have access to that cartoon to remind you the difference between a first-hand and second-hand account if you wish to access that. But you have this discussion post here. So you're going to click to open the discussion post and you will read these directions. You've just read an informational article about the Titanic. Do you think this is a first-hand or second-hand account? What evidence in the text did you read that made you think that? Your response really must include two sentences because you have to answer both parts of the question to earn full credit. So you will need to tell me in sentence number one whether you think it's a first-hand or second-hand account. And then in sentence number two, give me some evidence from the text. What did you read that told you in your brain that this was either a first-hand or second-hand account? If you have any questions, please let me know.